Hi, how's it going? I'm Jack St. James from Avex Sands, and I'll be taking you through my performance that I just did with my Novation Launch Control XL and a couple of launch pads. Um, so first thing to look at is the Ableton Session. Um, if you look, uh, I've got a few ch eight channels. Channel one is got, has got all my drum sounds, and on that I've got a few effects which I use throughout the track, um, a beat repeater, a couple of delays and that sort of thing. Uh, channel two, I've got all my synth sounds, and again, a couple of effects which I use the um, the device selects to affect it, uh, various parts of the song. Uh, channel three, I've got all my vocals, which I use uh, different sends and pans. Uh, channel four, I've got my MIDI channel for all the various MIDI synth sounds I play on the Impulse 49. Uh, my channel five is where I have all the different sounds that I use for my launch pad. Uh, channel 8 is a, just an ARP sound which I use throughout the track. Channel 7 is my uh, vocal sample which I use in the middle 8. And finally channel 8 is uh, where I have MIDI feedback on my launch pad set up so that when I press buttons, lights show up. Okay, so now you kind of know what's, what channels I've used. Uh, I want to kind of take you through all the different scenes of the, uh, the, the track, the intro, the verse, the chorus, etc., and um, kind of break down what it was that I did in the performance. So the first thing that I did in the track was launch the first scene of the, uh, of the song, uh, and then brought up the volume of the first two channels using the faders on the Control XL. Then the next thing I needed to do was to record arm my Impulse 49 so that I could record in the MIDI notes I needed. So I just press track focus on track 4 which um, means that Ableton is now looking at that track and then I press the record arm button which is on um, because I have this record arm button here on because you can do different solos, mutes and so on but I have record arm on so I press record arm on track 4 and then launch the next scene and pressed uh, the MIDI clip, which I wanted to record the MIDI to. So once I played that in and I was happy, I turned off the record loop, and then I went to my Launch Control XL in order to start playing with the sound. So the first thing I needed to do in order to do that was I pressed the device control button here, and then this turns this row of um, encoders into uh, essentially controllers for the plugins and uh, sounds and the rack that I had on that channel. So uh, on here, if you can see, I'm using this button to change the macro there. That button's changed that macro, and that button's changed that macro. So once the, the device control is on and then the track is selected, I can just essentially play with that until I was ready to move on to the next scene. So the next thing I need to do was launch the next scene on my, scene on my launch pad, and then the next sound I used within that scene is on my other launch pad. So I track focus on that launch pad, record arm it, so that the sounds here are played. So um, whilst that was playing, because I'd selected it on my Launch Control XL, I could play away and then that was all fine. Um, halfway through that performance, in the next scene, I know that what I need to be doing is uh, using the different sends and pans and stuff. So I switched off the device control and that meant that this row of encoders then becomes um, their standard sort of factory setting of using the pan left and right. So as the vocals were coming in, I was using these, these buttons here, which is send A and send B. And I was just kind of bringing up the reverb and delay and then using the pan to kind of create that sort of left, right pan reverb delay sort of effect that I used. And then I kind of swung them back down to off and then all the sends are off and the uh, pan is back to the middle. Okay, so after I've got my uh, encoders back to zero, the sends back to zero and the pan back to the middle, the next thing I did was I wanted to play some effects on the synth channel, which is channel two. So what I need to do is track focus on channel two and turn on device control again, which turns these encoders from the pans to the device control. The first effect I had was a redux. so. That meant with this button here, I could turn that up and kind of bring that sound in and then bring it back out. Then the next thing I wanted to do was to use the auto filter. So to switch from the Redux effect, which is highlighted in blue and have that sort of controlling hand symbol on it, I press device device button and then this sort of tracks um, device select 
area here is then in operation. So if I press left, it now selects the auto filter. So if I press that right again, left again, you can kind of get the idea. You can choose which one ever one, whichever one you want in that rack. So now I have that one selected, which means the uh, device control buttons control that effect. So I brought that in and then back out. And then the next bit, I really wanted to, the, the, the music to focus on the vocal sound, which is on channel three. So I wanted to mute out any sounds which might be coming out from channel one and two. So by pressing the mute button here, these buttons along the bottom then become your mute switches. So by pressing mute one and two, that meant all those sounds were being muted out and then the just purely the sound I wanted to be heard on channel three was coming through. So once that was done, switch that back off. And so the sounds were coming through as they were before. So the next bit, I launched the next scene, which was uh, the next uh, chorus. And I wanted to use some custom MIDI mappings, which I had um, set up. So by pressing the user button up here, this takes the Launch Control XL out of its regular sort of factory mode where the buttons kind of follow the Ableton setup, you know, the faders and the encoders and so on. And it can basically do anything you want. So the way I set it up was to do a different few different things. So on the um, on the drum channel here, um, I had it set up so that these three buttons turned on and off these different effects. So the first one is a is a rack which has a few effects on it. The second one has a sort of delay, and then the third one's another delay again. And then once they were on, I could then use these encoders, you know, custom MIDI map and whatever I wanted to sort of play with the sounds. So I could have a sort of uh, improvised air, improvised section of the song um, using the mini mapping and I kind of created whatever I want on the fly. Uh, so after I'd finished sort of improvising using the uh, user mode to play with different effects, I wanted to turn on some MIDI effects I had on my uh, performance launch pad. So I had set up here these three MIDI modifiers. So by turning these on, it turned the launch pad from just doing regular MIDI feedback into sort of giving me arpeggiated sounds and colors and um, giving it sort of a bit of interest to when I was performing. So once I had uh, those three MIDI port modifiers turned on, I went to the factory mode where I could then uh, turn up the volume on the synth solo sound by turning up the fader here and then turning up a bit of reverb and delay for the solo. And then I was awake. So I could do the solo, had the reverbs and delays, correct volume, and then once I'd finished with the solo, I held the note, cranked up the sends, so I get reverbs and delays and fade out the music. And that was it.